is an open mode. It's a very, there's a sound between the English horn and the oboe wing. I see. So the, in the bolero of Ravel, you hear an open the mode. There's an open mode solo. Uh, Debussy, the image, has also an open the mode solo. Reggie Strauss, Symphonia Domestica, has an open the mode solo. And a lot of Bach. I just played a little bit of Bach. It's, a Baroque, it's, it's from Baroque era, no, right? It is from Baroque. But yeah, it, it all comes from the Renaissance, where they made families of instruments. Right? So you had a soprano recorder, an alto recorder, a tenor recorder, and a bass recorder. You had a gamba, uh, you had all types of gambas, all different ranges. You had a whole family of instruments, they were making that. So the oboe was also, you had four, four oboes, basically, four or five t t types of oboes. Why would a composer choose oboe the more over the oboe? The sound. Fingering, of course, an oboe more is an A, eh? and an oboe is a C. So okay, yeah. I see. There's a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that is very. Uh, the the color is very dark. The color is dense. Yeah, I, I find it very dense. Right, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This, yeah, well, the oboe is just a little bit a better instrument than open the more. People, uh, f factories don't want to do research in open the more because it is a small market, so they don't improve it. Yeah. The oboe is improved. Yeah? From what I'm seeing, the oboe is very good for multiphonics. The response is quite fast. No, it's not true for flute, you know, flute is like you have to, many of them do, don't come out immediately. So well, there are books written full of, of multiphonics, but they're all written for the semi-automatic oboe. Semi-automatic. And even within the semi-automatic oboe, certain fingerings don't work. I see. Yeah, so I find it very interesting, but it, uh, I, I simply have no time to go deep into that. So I have two basic multiphonics, which always work, and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and composers uh, so always, uh, find it very interesting. But actually, it is wrong from what they. So sometimes the composers write fingerings, and I can't make it. So uh, that's wow. this one, yeah. Yeah. You can make a variety, but... So should, should, uh, should composers put in the fingering, uh, knowing that wait, it's usually for semi-automatic fingering, like if they read from the books, yeah. it's semi-automatic, right? Yeah. So yeah. should they still put the fingering on the score? Oh, yeah, do it. Okay. Do it in case it works. Okay. So th this is from the same automatic. You could even you could even do staccato and all this, yeah. right? It's really fast. It's That's what I like. The response is so fast. It is. It's so it is. good. Yeah. It is. Um, and the other one is then. Uh, in fact, a normal C sharp. By changing the pressure a little bit. You get a multiphonic. I get a multiphonic. From the C sharp. So I have to be very careful when I play softly in high C sharp, and it has to be a normal one. Also, it's a C sharp fingering. Yeah, yeah. Is, is that true for many other notes? Like, it's a regular fingering. No. It's actually a regular fingering, and then. It's a regular fingering. And then, it is it's just for the C sharp, or is it true for other notes? For the high D too? Oh, 
I think it's a harmonic thing, right? Okay. So it's the e, it's the D and then you you have that harmonic. D E flat. Well, I got a ring song. You can change the position of your tongue. You can... Nice. Uh, can you do growling on the? <laughs> now I do flutter trauma actually. Okay. So you can do flutter trauma low with the reed. That's maybe interesting too. Does it work from? Does it work work across register yeah. low, medium, and high? No yeah. problems. Like uh, it's all good. The, the, again, you need you need to read for that. It's not okay. Good. Because like let's say for clarinet, clarinet is is harder on the high register, easier on the lower. I mean, you can do across. Same like, same oboe. I mean, in intonation start to suffer, of course. For for high notes, you have to hold the reed, you have to grab the grip a little bit. Um, So you play a low D, yeah, yeah, a low D, and then then you get a high A. So even even uh, and then you can switch. You use it in even conventional uh, in in the writer's springs of of uh, uh, Stravinsky, the, the the second part starts with an uh, octave A, the the the, oh, the second oboe. Oh, Sometimes you play it. It takes a low D, and then you get a high A. What is written there, and then it is safe. It is very soft. Okay. Yeah. Also, oh, yeah. Okay, I see. So you decide at the spot. Yeah. You, what, what what fingering you want to take? Could what you, kind of color you want? I see. Could you uh, show uh, a, a a trill like a a trill? I mean a, a tremolo between that harmonic and the real note. Oh. what you cannot do on an automatic system. That really works. In, with this read it works. Okay. That's, I'm surprised about it too. Huh? Oh, you hear a low D already. You hear a low D yeah. comes in. Okay. So actually I can't I can't do it okay. on an automatic system. Well so oh, it's a very cool effect. I love the harmonic thing, the mm -hmm. harmonic trills. It's always a fifth, right? Basically you mm -hmm. think about the Octave fifth. Octave and a fifth. Octave Octave and a fifth. fifth. Okay. Like, like a clarinet, eh? that doesn't really change key. 